Hi there, I'm Virginia Lindsay of Ginger Cake Patterns and Design and today we're going to talk and make pin cushions. Um, I love pin cushions like most people who sew and using a cute pin cushion to kind of get organized is a great way to kind of motivate yourself. Um, I get a lot of comments here on this channel about this pin cushion in particular. It is, uh, and I can't tell, show you how to recreate this one because it is, um, it is from a traditional quilt block that I bought um, at an antique store. Um, but what I did was I took this piece and then I sewed my own backing to it, turned it into, you know, I sewed it right sides together, stuffed it, hand sewed it closed. And this is a great way to create a pincushion if you have, if you find a little antique piece of um, quilt blocking. Uh, but today we're going to do, uh, we're going to make this pincushion, which is from a traditional piece called a sawtooth star and um, many of you maybe have made sawtooth star quilt blocks before and this one is is fun because it's um, it makes a smaller one and then we're going to create this little boxy pin cushion out of it so I'm really excited to show you and I love this I love this block because you're able to sort of showcase um, a really cute fabric in the middle this is called fussy cutting if you've ever heard that term before um, you can fussy cut in a really cute shape of, of special fabric that you love and then you know okay here are our quilt pieces um, the quilt block pieces we're gonna need you're gonna need one three by three square this is where you would fussy cut that nice piece we were talking about like this piece here is going to be this one and the one I'm going to show you. And then you need four three and a half by two pieces. Those are going to go around that way. And you need four two by twos for the corners. Let's see if I can get those separated. Two by twos for the corners. And then eight more two by twos that are going to be these little. Um, you know, petals to the sawtooth star, or you know, rays of whatever. So, um, so I have to show you how to um, make you know to make these triangle pieces here. But I would suggest you know you take your your centerpiece and you coordinate outward that way. See, I use this um, light blue that's in here, and the orange, and then the dark navy blue. This might even be black, but it doesn't really matter because there's navy here, and you know it coordinates. Okay, the first thing you do is you take your, these little um, pieces and you draw a line straight through the diagonal on every single one of them. I'm just using, on every single one of these dark pieces, not on these orange ones. You don't have to draw a line on this. But on all these orange ones, you draw a line straight down the middle. You can use a straight edge if you want. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And the reason we're doing that is because after you've drawn a line on all of those, then you're going to take it and you're going to place it right on top of this, the three and a half by two inch pieces, and you're going to sew right down here like this. And then you're going to, so well, let's do that and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, here's the piece I sewed it. Now I'm going to clip my threads. One thing that's really great to do when you're doing quilt blocks is to clip your threads as you go. So I have it like this. You see I sewed right down this line that I created. And now I'm just going to cut this right here. And those are just waist pieces. And then I'm going to press this like that. Okay? And the pressing, I'm just going to press the whole seam out towards the um, corner. That's just easier. And then I'm gonna do another one. After I press that, then I'm gonna sew this piece on right here. Straight down that line. So this is already pressed out. I sew this one, and then it's gonna look like this. And it's gonna, see, I'm gonna cut this off just like I did that one, press it that way. I'm gonna bring it back when it's done. Okay, there it is. I sewed it on straight down that center line that I had marked. Then I cut off that corner just like before, pressed it. See that? Now you're going to repeat that three more times and it's going to be and it's going to be a perfect fit onto your centerpiece. So I'm going to come back after I've done three more of those just that way. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to do is um, start putting the block together. And I'm going to put this piece 
in this piece, I'm going to sew these two on either side of my main center piece. Okay, but don't sew these two on yet because what you need to do first is sew these blocks to the corners. Like this. We're going to move this up here so you can see. Like this and this. Okay, so I'm going to sew, I'm just going to fold these over to show myself I need to sew those on. Also, kind of be careful when you're putting it together because you don't want it to look like that. You have to make sure it looks like this to get the sawtooth star look. So we're going to go, we're going to fold this here, this here, and put these in here like this. And then over to my sewing machine, I'm going to sew down those two lines, down these two lines, down these two lines. Okay, I wanted to talk uh, just a little bit about the seam allowance. I'm actually using my walking foot, um, but you you can also use a, a quarter inch foot that just uh, makes quilting really perfect. I just you know use my walking foot and I, I try to keep a really consistent a really consistent uh, seam. I also don't do a lot of back stitching on these little pieces because my machine often will um, kind of eat those little pieces up and I'll have like a lump. So um, see how that is done. And uh, I'm trimming my, again, trimming my threads. And now I'm going to press both of my seams out towards the outer pieces. So it'll lay nice and flat like that. And now I'm sewing the sides of the uh, star onto the main center piece. Again, I'm not bothering to back stitch and clipping my threads as I go. But this time I'm going to press the seam towards the center piece like this. Okay. Here I am back at the iron and I'm going to just press that center seam or that seam onto the um, center piece towards like this. And then I go ahead and usually just kind of give it a press on both sides. Okay, now you can see that all the pieces are going to line up beautifully to put this together. Won't that be such a cute block? Here, let me show you a little bit better. Oh, it's so fun. See it? Okay, so the last thing I have to do is sew this onto here and this onto here. And when I do it, I'm going to just make sure that these seams are lined up. This seam and this seam. And that'll give me a really pretty, pretty block. And so all the way down there. And then I'm going to again press the seam in towards the center. I'm going to show you that when I'm done. Okay, I'm on the back of the star here. And I'm pressing this seam I just made in towards the center piece. Okay. Look how cute. Now the reason I wanted to press all those seams in towards the center is because I'm just going to do a top stitch to kind of emphasize the center block. I'm going to top stitch a whole nice square right here on top. And then we will um, sew it to the back. But you can see what a darling quilt block this makes. Um, I just love it. And you know you don't obviously don't have to make a pin cushion from it. You could make a variety of things. Okay so for my backing I'm just going to use you know two of the fabrics um, that I used for the star um, and I overlapped them a little to make sure that I used plenty for my seam allowance. I'm going to turn it over like this and then that was my rotary cutter now I have these two pieces. I'm going to just sew them together and then press that out. Okay, I decided instead of leaving an opening on the side when I sewed these two together, which is how I've done it before, um, I decided to leave an opening right there. I think that'll be, you know, that'll keep the look of the um, quilt top a little bit better. So you can do either way. But let's put this on right there. And then I'm going to pin. Sorry about my dog. He barks at everything. And then sew around the entire perimeter. 
Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is how to make those little boxy corners. You see I sewed the, um, around the entire perimeter because I put my opening right here. Now if you want to have your opening up in here, you need to, which is fine also, you just need to back stitch and then leave an opening in one of these triangles if you're going to do a, a solid backing. And um, so the next thing we're going to do is make our little box corners. So I'm just going to snip in. Again, like if you haven't done this before, I would go ahead and draw it on there. And then you just t separate the two sides, pull it out. See how that looks? Kind of looks like a little, a little X, a little X. And you um, take your fingers and you open that seam up to lay flat. And this seam too to lay, so you flatten it all out into a little piece right this. And then over at your sewing machine, I'm just going to move this so you can see my sewing machine. You just keep your thumb on it and you just sew over the opening to create your box corner. Like that. And clip your threads and you are done. Okay, the next step, you just, you have your box corners. Just turn it on inside out. You can see what it looks like. Isn't that cute? And now I'm just going to take my stuffing. I've got a whole big bunch of stuffing right here. It takes quite a bit to stuff to get a nice, I like to get my things really full of stuffing. Just fill it up. And I'm just gonna sew this opening with a ladder stitch. I put an I put a knot at the end of my this is a pin cushion, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes I kind of do like a, a loose ladder stitch and then pull it tight as I go. Not too tight, or you get that kind of puckering. You want just the right amount of tension there. And then it kind of sh it shows up less in my opinion. Okay, so just do that, and then we'll be back. Here it is. Now, that didn't turn out looking all that good, but so maybe it is better to have it on the side. So it won't matter though. So it's nice and um, it's kind of springy, and what I might do, which I've seen other people do, is kind of put it under some heavy books for a day, and that really flattens it out. I kind of think I might want it sort of flatter, but this is what it looks like, and I think it's so cute. I hope you like it. Here's the other one to kind of compare it. See, aren't they precious? I love them. I hope you get to make one. Okay, there you have it. A traditional quilt block, the Sawtooth Star, made into an adorable pincushion. I think we need new pincushions when we're about to start all of our holiday making. So I hope you guys get to make one and um, leave a comment. I know I have some really big quilters out there and I would love to hear how you would do, what well, you know, what you would do differently. Am I doing something, you know, that would make, that is inefficient or would make things better or that you would get a more perfect block from? Leave some comments and let me know your thoughts and how you could help out beginners doing these types of things. We wanna make quilting uh, easy and accessible for people. So there you go, the Sawtooth Star pin cushion. Please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and let me know what you thought about the, uh, the video in the comments. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.